I think people have to remember that the Bitcoin dominance is a shorter term trend without without regulation framework. I think crypto is in a heap of trouble for a period until we get that regulation. And that's my big worry is that because the Fed intervention was unparalleled since 09, it's what what's the downside with the Fed on the sidelines and sucking liquidity out in we should see by later this year, at least I have it pinpointed in that by the fourth quarter, we actually should be in a recession. Right now, crypto is what's in the news. But right now, it's altcoin collapse. Um, I think you and I both remember about a month or two ago when Bitcoin was knocking on that 30,000 door. Everyone was saying, get ready, load the boat for the alt season move here. This is going to be it, remember? And um, we know that we know that, that did not occur. If you just take a market with 10 people in it, right? And at first, there's no one long a stock or a crypto, um, but slowly people start buying, right? So what when you get to the point where everyone's saying the altcoin season is going to happen, get long, essentially everyone that is long is going to get have gotten long. So let's say all 10 people are long. If prices haven't moved up at that point, logic dictates that there's no one else to buy. And all it takes in the market uh, is one or two negatives, one or two sellers, and people start panicking and then start dumping. And so I think I think any time in the future where you hear like, oh, this is going to happen. And by the way, this this is getting into the halving of it too. And and I'm, I'm a skeptic that this next halving is going to have the impact that the last ones have, because that's all I hear now. Without, without regulation framework, I think crypto is in a heap of trouble for a period until we get that regulation. I just wanted to show that Bitcoin dominance chart because I think it's such an important chart how you've been knocking on this 49% level over and over again. And then look at what's happening right here. And, and one of the things you're mentioning is dead on is number one, charting as a chartist, which is what I do, is that it tells you the more you knock on a door, the more likely eventually you break through. And so in this case, this door was a firm door stretching back to really uh, 2021, right? Right. Um, and and the and again, I'm, a, I'm big on analogies and examples. Think about this, folks. When when you go up to a door, let's say it's locked. Let's say your cat's in there. Your house is on fire. You really have to get through that door. You're going to run against it. Bam into it. Right. Chances are it's not going to break the first time. I think people have to remember that the Bitcoin dominance is a shorter term trend, meaning that that if you go back further, I mean, it was way, way higher just before that 2021 bull market. At some point, I do expect Bitcoin and Ethereum to crack and come down. Mm -hmm. And in general, that's not going to be good for the alts. Because if if you have people getting scared even at the top, the, the best, I mean, Bitcoin, again, if there's one that's going to survive that's not going to be regulated by the SEC, it's Bitcoin. If that breaks and starts to collapse down, let's say it even gets back to 20,000, very, very hard for money to feel comfortable to go into the even riskier assets like the Cardano's and the Solana's and those other ones as well. So, so a couple things in terms of real world, like being in it. So the same things in terms of what happened in 2021 and even what happened over the last few months with the, the meme coin, shit coin kind of situation where, where you had these people that were just, they were bringing to market anything. I mean, it could have been like, hey, we drop ship you know, widgets, it like literally meant nothing, but they would name their company widget.com, right? Pets.com, right. like all these dot coms. And instantaneously, they would shoot up hundreds of percentage. They would 10x, you know, 15x, 20x. It happens every so often because greed and fear never change. Right. So the greed of people will make them want to believe that whatever it is, even if they know deep down it has no value, they still believe that they can 10x their money and then sell it to someone else at a higher level. And that in and of itself was what raised flags for me is just being like, holy cow, I'm having like PTSD flashback from the 1999 2000 level. This is exactly what people were doing. And look at how it came out. And so I think I think for me, that was like the real recognition of something's wrong here. When you, when you have things that are being shielded that do not have any intrinsic value or use case even, that's a warning sign. So yeah, so so for me at least, it, specifically with Ethereum, I think I think the number one thing why it's held up a little bit better is probably I don't believe it was named as a security in that group of of list that the SEC you know said. So I think that gives people confidence. And and one of the things I like in Bitcoin too is like Bitcoin is like your digital gold, and Ethereum is kind of like your digital silver, right? And and the reason I say digital silver is number one, it's usually more volatile. Silver is more volatile than gold, and also number two, you have this kind of 
industrial use case for mm -hmm. silver, right? It's a store of safety, but it also is used in the economy. Well, B Ethereum, you could argue kind of the same thing. People believe it's kind of a safety hedge, but they also need it. You know, you use it for various transactions and, and different things as well like that. So so I think, I think that's one of the keys for me is that you have digital gold and silver. And so expect it to be more volatile. But, but what we can see is look at this beautiful like parallel lines and how in terms of charting, and, and by the way, this is this is just more proof that you know, you don't know why these things work out. I don't. I certainly don't. But there's some sub, sort of subconscious in traders and investors and 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 people's minds that tries to make sense out of out of chaos, right? So most of the people would look at this. Oh, this is a wild chart. But look at how many parallels exist within this chart. Like the high, this is parallel to these points, which then are this parallel to these points and, and vice versa all the way down here. And we can see that we did break down short term. So I do expect Ethereum to come in here towards the 1635 level. But now that then becomes the support level, the next level, right? You have the lowest point here going back to 2022 connected through these lows right through here. And that now becomes your technical support. So if we do sell off there as a technician, I would start saying, okay, if we're going to bounce, this is going to be the spot where we're going to get a bounce doesn't mean ethereum's bottoming by any stretch but that would just be a technical short-term level of support this would be something that i would be watching like a hawk right so there's a trend line here that you're hovering on if this breaks you then probably have downside into this level down here and so that to me would be something that we would pay attention to we obviously saw what the F the SEC did last week to Binance. We then Coinbase. Obviously, the Binance situation is much, much more serious because of the allegations. But like, is this an all out war to kind of blow up the altcoins by the by the government? I mean, I, I mean, are, are should people that are let's say let's say you're holding some Cardano right now. Do you hold it? Do you get rid of it? Do you look for a bounce and get rid of it? How do you how do you handle that? It's tough to say because, uh, you know, for the last 18 months, everyone always wants to know, well, should they sell their altcoins? If you want exposure to crypto, right? Like if, if you can think of a bull case, okay? Because I mean, there's always going to be, there's always the other view, right? If you can think of a bull case, we know that Bitcoin leads, right? So you can get exposure to crypto via Bitcoin and you're likely going to outperform that altcoin, right? So you could theoretically buy that altcoin later with Bitcoin if you want exposure mm. to crypto, right? Because the the all Bitcoin valuations keep going down. So just like we said, this was consolidating, kept on hitting resistance, finally in the process of breaking out right here on the uh, Bitcoin dominance chart. Now, in all fairness, there's not a lot of resistance on the way up now. I mean, you're getting to a point where there's a big move coming in this Bitcoin dominance. And the first thing I see, and I'll put a trend line in, see all these kind of pivot points right in here, right. right across here, this low right in there. And you're right about that. Look at this. Look at how you kind of can draw a line right across here. And what's even more amazing in this, if you take the highs of Bitcoin dominance from 2017 and you connect it to the highest point in 2021, look at the convergence. So I'm right around that 59, 60% level in terms of Bitcoin dominance. Absolutely. Like one of the reasons you have to charts, charts are amazing in this respect. But if you looked back at 2021 right here, and you looked at the midpoint of the cycle, and then you saw here, it made sense that this was going to be where the most resistance on the chart was going to be. If Bitcoin was going to fail its move, it was going to be on this pierce of 30,000. Now, not just not just 30 hitting and kissing, but it actually needed to pierce 30 because psychologically, when price pierces an even number, that just having that three in front, that 30,000 versus 29, it's going to trigger more people to go long and it's going to stop out people that are short. And so essentially you get the biggest switches at these even numbers. And that's exactly what we saw here. And so once that occurred, then price could actually start to come down because you got your max people long and there were not really any people left that weren't long at that point. Same thing with all coins and, and so forth. So let's say magically we get regulation and clarity. Right. Um, big institutions like I mean, that's that's my case, right, is that that right now there's no no one with big money is going near crypto because it, there's just it's just way too uncertain. So right. so if you did get clarity and it was like definitive clarity, then you do. I, I do at least think with Bitcoin that you would see big money start to inch in a little bit. Chances are the the Fed doesn't doesn't raise rates, but I think that 
they will be hawkish because number one, I, I don't think they like the rally in the stock market. I mean, when you see these tech mm. stocks getting these crazy valuations again, it's just whether it's money coming from crypto or it's just new money flowing in, it, it, it there's a wealth effect that occurs, right? When when you see your 401k up 20%, you start to say, oh, you know, maybe I can buy that new car or maybe I can buy that new TV. And it, it creates a a demand surge that if supply can't keep up with it causes prices to go up so for me unfortunately i'm i'm doubtful i think i think right now it's easy right mm -hmm. you know you have low unemployment you have good jobs numbers for the most part so it's easy to say yeah we're going to stay the course show me an economy where you have six percent unemployment right. and you know people are really struggling even more so and then tell me that the fed you know isn't going to come off the sidelines and, and i agree with you if they that that would be the worst case i know people want it but one of the things that i always try to Im input into people is that cycles are natural courses right bull markets bear markets business cycles those are natural naturally occurring and if you don't screw with them I'm a big believer that it's much more like a rolling hill, right? Mm. It's when you have the Fed coming in like they've done, kind of doing things that create longer bull markets, where the bull markets get crazier, the liquidity, the risk taking gets crazier. That's where you get the bigger. So it becomes much more like a Mount Everest, like up and then a collapse to the downside. And that's my big worry is that because the Fed intervention was unparalleled since 09, it's what what's the downside i mean right. again if you look at trends right we can be above trend for a while but at some point it needs to come back below trend well, we've been above trend and that's the concern is like how does how does the business cycle react when things get tough and and can the fed come out and save the day with inflation elevated with the fed on the sidelines and sucking liquidity out in we should see by later this year at least i have it pinpointed in that by the fourth quarter we actually should be in a recession now whether or not the the data will show that it's a recession yet sometimes it's a lagging you know we don't see until a month or two later but but one of the things i would keep a really close eye on is the jobless claims